Okay, so in this video, we'll be going over how to use the fillet edge component, and it'll allow us to fillet the edge of any object. So we'll just bring in initially a box. Then we can pick which edges are actually going to be the ones that we fillet. And here, ultimately, we have that fillet size that we can play around with. So this is more of a quick tip tutorial to learn how to use fillet. It's not as straightforward as using a fillet in Rhino, because in Rhino, you could just pick an edge, select it, and then it'll just do it. Here, you actually have to plug in the list of edges that you want to react to it. So here, it's going to be 12 of those edges are going to be reacting to it. And if I just want four of those edges to react to it, it'll be the bottom four. So this is the way that you can use a series of numbers to kind of react and adjust that fillet edge. Um, so I'll be going over those steps here. Um, hopefully, uh, if you do have any questions, make sure to let me know. Okay, so to start, I'm going to bring in a component called Fillet Edge. And this is actually a really cool component because this was not, did not exist in Rhino 5 or Grasshopper for Rhino 5. So I'm glad that this is here um, to so I can show you how to use it. Now, there are a lot of inputs here. Um, so I'll show you those. But first, before we do a fillet edge, we need to basically bring in an object that we can use this with. So for now, the simple way to just create a box, I'll just go to box. And then here, I'll go to domain box. So this will give me an X, Y, and Z. And let's go ahead and just do 12 and the X, Y, and Z. And now notice that we basically have a box. So this is the quickest way that we can do it. Um, and now we're going to plug in the box into the shape and notice that nothing's going to happen, right? Uh, because there are some things that we need to plug into here. So the edges, we need to plug in a list of edges that are going to react to that fillet edge. So to do that, I'll take this box and basically deconstruct it. So I'll go to deconstruct B rep and I'll plug this one into here. And you'll see that now we have all of the edges here, but it says we have 12 edges. Um, and what we need to get is the midpoint. So I'll go ahead and type in midpoint. So we can figure out which of the edges, because these edges need to be plugged in as a list. So if I plug in the edges here into the midpoint, then I'll disable the preview here. We'll see that we have 12 points. And what we're going to do, those, uh, those points are actually going to help us understand what number is associated with, with each one of those lines. So this midpoint, I'll go to a point list. And this will give me, once I plug that into the point list, it'll give me the, the list of points here. And you'll see them highlighted in green. So I'll go to point size 12. Make this big, a little bit too big. Okay, so now you see that if you want to fill an edge on all of them, we actually need one through 12. And if we just wanted to do the top, we'll do four, five, six, and seven. So that's the way that you can basically um, get the numbers. And now that we know that, we can go ahead and actually, the simplest way to do it is we can get a panel. And this panel, when you right click, go to multi line data. In here, we'll start with, we'll do four, enter five, enter six, enter seven, right? So now all of these values we can put, put into the edges. Or, oh, and lastly, what we need to plug in is the radius. So I'll go to radius of uh, 2.1, and I'll go here to radius. So now I'll disable the preview on the original box, and you'll see that the result is that we have fillet the edge of the top ones, right? So we can increase, and at some point it's going to go too far. Um, but this is basically how you could create a quick uh, fillet on specific ones. Now, if you want to do it to everything, there is uh, another trick that I like to use. So I'll delete this one. And let's say I want to select all the edges at once. Well, for me, I'll just create a series 
of numbers starting at zero, stepping by one and count. So count, I'll say 12, right? Because we have from zero to 11, which gives us 12 numbers that'll go here in the count. And then series will go into the edges, giving us basically all of those edges. And now we can basically decrease or increase the fillet of all of it. And this is just for, for a box, right? So if we did have more complex geometries, this will make it easier to just slide here and increase the count until you have all of them. Uh, so hopefully that made sense. Now, the next exercise is going to be to do a more complex shape and see how uh, we can do that. Okay, so now that I've gone over that, there are a few things that I didn't share with you, which is going to be the metric and the blend. So the blend, you're going to have, you can also choose chamfer, right? So you can cut it at 45 degrees. Here we could also go to blend, um, which looks similar to our fillet. And then metric, we have edge distance, we have rail distance. So these are going to just give you other, other options and other solutions. But for the basics is going to be to do a fillet. And then metric is going to be rolling ball. So rolling ball is just going to do basically an arc around it and then just do that all the way around. Um, so now that you have the basics as to how this works, um, notice also that since we do have the uh, what's it called? The series numbers here. We can decrease the number of series and then just um, play around with the geometry that way too. So let's go ahead and check this out. So, okay, so that looks pretty cool. Um, now, the next thing is going to be to take some kind of object that we create here in Rhino. So, I'll just be quick and do a box and then I'll do a see here I'll go to shaded view then I'll extrude let's see, extrude surface I'll extrude this one up scale this down and then do boolean union and to get rid of the crease I'll go merge all faces cool I'll take this object and I'll double click here and go to B rep and then I'll right click on here and go to set one b rep so the reason why i wanted to bring in a deep different b rep than just the box is because this is actually going to give us a bunch more um edges that we need to fill it so this will give you like a more of a realistic example as to what you would use so i'll plug this into here and then plug this into shape there and now you'll see that um something is giving us an issue here so Let's take a look here. So we have this B rep, and then here we start at six. So uh, what it is is I think the fillet it did one, zero, and one, which are the first two numbers, and then the radius is just a little bit too big. So I'll just decrease this a little bit, and then now we'll know that as we continue on here. So let's see here. Okay, so the issue that I was having here is that. We need to, if you go past the number that you have here, so notice that when you look at all your numbers here and you plug in your B rep into your deconstruct B rep, you're going to have way more edges. And now you have to figure out and look around and see what's the biggest number. So the biggest number here is going to be 23, which means that if we start at zero, we're going to actually have 24 numbers. So if you look here at the series, we have 24 numbers, and that's what's going to allow this to work. Now, if I go to 25, 26, you'll see that this will turn red because it's trying to fill it. There has more inputs than it can actually use. So that's where you can go here to 24. And you can even go to 23, but notice that it's not going to work. So you have to have the same number of edges here. Um, and that's just, you know, one way to do it. Um, and then here we can increase that fillet. And at some point, it'll just be too much for it. So that's where you kind of find your threshold.
So right here for this one, I think that looks really cool. And then if you don't want to view these, you'll disable the preview. And then let's go to blend, go to chamfer. So you can get some pretty complex geometries with some simple shapes just by using this, this component. So hopefully that made sense. And if you do have any questions, make sure to let me know. I will have this in the description for you to check out. Um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.